kindly give us a brief hint about the knowledge of mulk and of malakut. Now these are things that we don't talk about in the aqidah. <clears throat> they are part of haqiqa, the, the realm of ultimate knowledge and ultimate reality. And they have basis in revelation for sure, no question about that. But um, they pertain to what in the realm of haqiqa we call maratib al wujud. We can call levels of existence. Um, many people here have asked about dimensions of existence. And maybe you could use both words, but the thing is, when you talk about dimensions of existence, existence, maybe we're talking about things like parallel universes and, and things like that. Maratib al-wujud is a very profound teaching. And it's also a kind of teaching which is not readily understood. But in Maratib al-wujud you have, for example, al-ahadiyya. You have the reality of God as God alone. In the absence of creation, كَانَ اللَّهُ وَلَا شَيْءَ مَعَهُ God was and there was with him nothing. So we refer to that, we refer to that as ahadiyya and God doesn't change. So therefore Imam al-Junaid says, وَهُوَ الْآنَ عَلَى مَا عَلَيْهِ كَان That God is now as he was. God does not change. He changes the world. He creates the world. But God is God as He always was, always was. So Ahadiyya is usually regarded as the first of Maratib al-Wujud. It is the first of levels of existence. And then you have other levels that come from that. Uh, we have, for example, Jabarut, which is, they say, the world of lights. You know, before creation. It is uncreated. And then you have Malakut. Malakut is the creation of the realm of archetypes, what we call in Arabic amthal. And then you have the mulk, which is this world that we live in right now. So that's a very profound teaching. It is not required. And the aqidah always wants to talk about required belief. And it also wants to talk about things that are understood by people. They're not understood by some people and not by others. Okay? And the aqidah is the foundation upon which you can understand these other things because they must be understood in a way that is consistent with that basic platform. Um, but Malakut is the realm of the angels. It is the angelic world. It is the world of Amthal. And it is the spiritual world. And it is said to be infinitely more real than this world itself. And when people die, and they go into the barzakh, the intermediate world between this one and the resurrection, they go back into the malakut. The barzakh is malakuti. It is malakuti. It is real. And again, it is more real than this. You're totally awake there, and solid is solid, and, and, and pleasure is pleasure, and pain is pain, and the things are truly what they are. But in the world of Malakut, the meaning of a thing, or the ethical reality of a thing, is also expressed in its form. And many of our great scholars believe that the things that exist in this world they reflect these archetypes in the Malakut. Um, you know, I don't know, I don't remember, you know, uh, I don't think that we've talked hardly anything about evolution, but um, we might be able to do that a little bit tomorrow. But um, biologists of the 19th century, in, in the 19th century the talk about evolution was very common. Darwin wasn't, in fact, Darwin doesn't use the word. Darwin in Origin of Species, I don't believe, ever uses the word evolution. You know, uh, he believes in evolution. And he's trying to prove it. He's also understating what he's saying. But 
Talk about that was very common in the 19th century. In the 19th century, great scholars you know, knew about the fishes of the seas, of the ancient seas, the dinosaurs, the ancient mammals, they put them together. And um, they believed, most of them, in what they call creative evolution. They believed that there are different species and so forth, but God created them. Because one of the things about species is that they are uh, coherent and they are self-contained and they don't cross over. You, you, species is self-contained. You don't see one species becoming another species. You never see that. And species cannot mix, they cannot match. One of the ways that we know that donkeys and horses belong to the same species is that they can have offspring. You can have a mule. So that means they belong to the same species. But in the 19th century, a lot of 19th century biologists, they were very much concerned with the archetypical species. They wanted to discover what is the archetype of the human being that contains all possibilities of human beings. What is the archetype of the mollusk or of the horse or things like that? So for us, in our view of Melakut, uh, we would be interested in that idea. We might understand it differently, we might work with it differently, but it is a profound idea. And, you know, um, one of the aspects of modern science is that by shunning any kind of metaphysical um, dimension, uh, it impoverishes itself very, very greatly. 19th century scientists did not necessarily agree with that. 